Check, check, check. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for stopping by. And we're gonna continue on with our Blazor WebAssembly application that actually the last couple uh, things that the last couple videos have been more focusing on the back end and not so much the WebAssembly portion, but we will get back to the front end. Uh, what I wanna do is actually talk about something else. So if you are a new budding developer just getting ready to go into the industry, I will be honest with you, uh, these videos are meant to kind of help you with problem solving and understanding like the structure of Blazor and um, C Sharp and all that stuff and how webs are put, web apps are put together. But really the main thing that you should be taking away from this is that um, you are more likely, more than more likely than not going to be working in a new, or sorry, an old application that's already in existence and you'll be adding things to it as opposed to building something from scratch. And so this video, I wanna talk a little bit more about how we can do that using the .NET framework, or sorry, not .NET framework, .NET Core and um, entity framework and all that. So um, this is just, a, again, a rough example, but when you're looking at legacy web applications, the majority of those legacy web applications, actually, uh, they don't pull from the database exactly like what we've done here in our API. Um, so what we have right now is we've got controller and the controller essentially calls an instance of the room repository and that room repository uh, which is located here, uh, is going to do the calling to the database, all right? And it's going to call to the database using Entity Framework. Uh, we have our rooms already as a DB set, and it's going to just be pulling those rooms from the database as a list and then returning those rooms. But that's not always the case. Sometimes what ends up happening is um, legacy applications, they use something called SQL stored procedures. Now, if you are unfamiliar with SQL, um, SQL is a, it's called, it stands for Structured Query Language, sometimes called SQL, and essentially it is how uh, databases are queried, uh, or it's one way that databases are queried. Uh, so, and what that means is that here I have SQL Server Management Studio for, from Microsoft, and these are our two databases, Furniture and Rooms. And if I go here and select my top 1,000 rows, here's all the stuff that's in our database. Okay, This right here is, is an example of SQL, Structured Query Language. Um, and this is an example of just a query that you would write to get these things here. Um, but you can specify different things in this query as well. There's lots of other videos online uh, that kind of show how to do all this stuff. So I'm not going to get too deeply into it. Um, but you can do things like uh, where r.id is equal to 2. And then if I run this query, uh, what's going to happen is I'm just going to get my second room with the ID of 2. Okay, And obviously you can do a lot more complex things than this. But my point is that something like this can actually be stored in something called a uh, stored procedure. And the stored procedure is a lot of times called by web apps instead. So instead of here doing the entity framework thing where I pull the context and the rooms to list async, what I'm actually gonna do is pull from a stored procedure. So I wanna show you how to do that um, here real basically, and then we'll do something a little bit more advanced as well uh, in some of the stuff that I've seen in uh, modern web applications. So without any further ado, um, so if this is your uh, Visual Studio, it looks similar to mine, hopefully, uh, it should, if you've got all the necessary stuff installed. Then you should be over here on the left-hand side. You might see SQL Server Object Explorer. If not, go to View, and it should be right here. Control backslash, Control S, SQL Server Object Explorer. That's the one you want. So you can open that up. And what you should see is actually, I'm going to refresh it so you see the same view as me. And it should look something like this. If you expand the SQL Server node right here, you should see these two local DB things. Uh, our, uh, the one that we want to look at is this top one, MSSQ, L local DB, and then go to databases, and then you should see all the databases that are on your computer if there are. Now, if you're like me and you've got a whole bunch of different development going on, then you should see a whole bunch like I do. But otherwise, you, if you've only been following along with this and you've never done anything else uh, having to do with SQL or uh, SQL Management Studio or anything like that, then you'll likely only see this one database, Home Furnishing. Home Furnishings. So if you open it up, expand it, and go to Tables, you'll see the exact same two tables that I showed you just a second ago in my SQL Server Management Studio. See, right there, okay? So it's essentially the same thing. You'll also notice down here, we've got this arrow for programmability. If you expand that, you've got a folder for stored procedures. Now, right now, I don't have any stored procedures, so we're gonna add one 
to our database, all right? And that store procedure is going to allow us to get all of the rooms or return them just like this uh, method does in our repository, but instead the database is doing it in, uh, in its stead. Uh, and so what that a lot of times does is it allows the database to do the querying for us, which can be faster. It doesn't necessarily rely on the user's computer or their computer processing. It lets the server do it. And a uh, structured query language is known for being very, very fast, getting lots of data in a short amount of time. So stored procedures are usually pretty good for that. Uh, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to, on the stored procedures folder right here, we're going to right click and say add a new stored procedure. And so you should see a new window that populates like this. Um, mine is being a little wonky. There we go. It should look like that. Okay, so create procedure, dbo.procedure. Uh, what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to modify this just a little bit. So here I'm going to change procedure to sp sp underscore and we're going to call it get all rooms rooms okay most store procedures are named like this sp underscore uh, but it also depends on you know whatever company you're working for that does it we're not going to worry about parameters right now so i'm going to delete that and we're going to keep the as right here and then i'm also going to get rid of these two things too because i don't necessarily want to return anything all right so we're gonna do a little bit of sql here i'm gonna start with a begin i'm gonna put an end down here and then within this begin I'm going to say set no count on. And what that does is it, uh, when a stored procedure runs, a lot of times it'll return a value to just an integer value saying that, you know, it ran. We don't want that to be returned to our program so it doesn't mess things up. And then what we want to do here is select and star. And the select star means select all attributes or all fields um, of the uh, thing that we're querying. And then we're going to select all that from we're going to say home furnishings, Ooh, and it's already populating for us, which is cool, dot dbo, dot rooms. And that's it. That's our store procedure. Pretty simple. You can add some other things in here too. Uh, one thing I'm actually going to add up here at the top is so that it knows what it's doing. Uh, I'm going to say use and then brackets, and we're going to say home furnishings so that it knows that it needs to absolutely use this particular uh, database um, in order to run. And there we go create dbo store procedure looks good oh i want to add a few more things too i'm going to say go i'm going to set ansi nulls on and i'm going to say go and i'm going to say set quoted identifier on and go there we go all right, and I just added those things in there because when you make a store procedure in SQL Server Management Studio, you get essentially that same thing. Uh, so if I go here and I do the same thing and I say store procedure and I say, yeah, well then, where is it? Mm, let's go store procedure, store procedure. I don't know why it's not showing me that option. It's a little weird, but that's okay. I'm going to refresh and see if that fixes things. Oopsies, not Edlin. Oh, there we go, stored procedure. Uh, that's weird that it's not giving me the option there, but we do that, no, stored procedure. Oh, there we go, yeah, that works. So it's basically the same thing. And you can see this is all the stuff that gets put in there along with create procedure and all that other stuff. So anyways, so there we go. I'll leave that in there like that. And then in order to make this work, we just need to run it. So we're gonna say update and, oh goodness. Of course, it's not working. So I wonder if it's because of all these things in here. It doesn't want any of that stuff. I wonder if I just leave it out. All right, yeah, that looks good like that. And then if I run this now, update it, uh, update, and preparing update script, generate update database. There we go, should do it. And update completed successfully. And if I go back here to SQL Server Object Explorer, and oh, there it is, SP get all rooms. And I can execute the procedure now, and it should return all the rooms, if I'm not mistaken. I've never actually used it like this before. Oh, there it is. See? Perfect. Cool. Uh, so there's all of our rooms returned for us. Results, messages, done. If it, and see down here this return value? Uh, sometimes that shows up. So if I actually like remove this from that right there, this doesn't actually affect anything in the stored procedure, and I run it. There we go. There's my return. So this is essentially what I'm going to be returning. 
All right, so what I've done is I've built a stored procedure for my SQL database, and you can see it in here as well. If I refresh this, there we go, and there's my stored procedure, and I can execute it from here as well. It's just an OK, go, and hit execute, and boom, there we go. There's my, so this is essentially returning the same thing that our rooms uh, repository thing does, except it's returning the actual rooms themselves, and it is returning it uh, from the database instead of Entity Framework doing all the work for us, okay? So I'm gonna close that because we don't need that script, and I'm gonna close this because it already exists, and now I'm gonna do some changes to the database itself to make sure that this actually works, or not, sorry, not the database, the application itself. Um, so first and foremost, I want to go to my contracts for my room repository. Right now, all I have is a get all rooms, I'm going to change, or I'm going to add a new, whoops, I'm going to add a new task. This is also going to return an I enumerable, and this is also going to be of the type room, and we're going to call this get all rooms SP for stored procedure. Again, doesn't take any uh, parameters or anything like that. Okay, save that. I'm going to go back to my rooms repository now. Notice that, again, it's now giving me an error telling me that I'm missing some stuff, so I'm going to control dot and say implement the missing members. There we go. And that's what I'm looking for right there. And so in order to do this, we do something a little bit differently. Um, we're gonna kind of start off the same way. It's gonna say var rooms, and we're gonna say equals, oh, I almost forgot up here because it's a public async method. We wanna be able to, you know, uh, call it asynchronously. So I'm gonna say public, or sorry, var rooms equals await and context, there we go, dot rooms. But this time we're gonna say from SQL raw, there we go. And now in here, I'm gonna put in an uh, interpolated string, so dollar sign, and we're gonna call the name of the stored procedure that we just made. So it would be sp underscore get all rooms, there we go close that off and then to list async and then I'm just going to return rooms so what this is essentially going to do is instead of doing like here context.rooms.to list async so instead of entity framework taking care of the comp compilation of putting the rooms together and returning it to my uh, controller instead I'm going to send this command to the database and say hey execute the stored procedure, and whatever you get back, put that into a list instead, okay? And the reason we're doing it like this, even though it's gonna be the same thing as this, because you may say like, why would I waste my time doing that? The reason is because most legacy applications already have a lot of stored procedures in place. And another thing about this is stored procedures give developers and DBAs a lot more control over the data. And so running the stored procedure not only is faster and more efficient, but it can also give you a lot more control over what's being returned. And so just like what we did here was we built the stored procedure and now we're calling it, the methods here and the stored procedure are a lot of times built in parallel to one another. So now that I've got that in place, I can come back to my rooms controller here and I can call that uh, get rooms SP or SP get rooms or what did we call it? Yeah, SP get all rooms. Uh, so I'm gonna do that again in here. Uh, my rooms controller, uh, let's see, not this one. This is actually the rooms controller for the front end. I wanna go to, hold on one second. Oh no, that was the, that was the right rooms controller. There we go. Uh, I'm gonna call that rooms controller from here, or not, the, sorry, not the rooms controller. I'm gonna call that particular method from my rooms controller. So I'm gonna shrink that down. I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna make another method in this so that I can compare the two together. So HTTP get, um, this one, however, I'm gonna use a template of get rooms SP. And so that's gonna stand for get rooms via the store procedure. Then this will be a public async, uh, and we'll say at the task action results, result, and this is gonna be an I enumerable of room yeah, we're just going to say it's going to be an ID enumerable of rooms. And we're going to say get rooms. There we go. And I'm going to call it ooh, get rooms SP. So I've got something a little bit different there. All right. And so now with that, I'm going to say var rooms equals await. 
and then this will be calling the room repository and it will be get all rooms sp there we go and uh, what is going on here it is room repository not rooms repository there we go spelling counts it's important and then we'll say return okay and rooms all right so essentially what i've got is again another method in my controller but this time different from this first one up here i'm returning just the rooms themselves i'm not going to turn them into a room dto just yet even though i can do that i'm not going to uh, and then I'm just going to be returning the room here. And this is just for illustrative purposes so we can see the difference between the original and the get room uh, store procedure. And so if I run this, I should be able to use Swagger, uh, the Swagger UI, in order to view these methods and how they work. So let's take a look here and bring Swagger over to this screen. There we go. All right, so here's my original one, API slash rooms. And if I call this, remember, this one returns room DTOs. So I've got my room DTOs here. All right, so I'll shrink that. And then over here, I've got get rooms SP. So this one is actually going to return a full on room. And it's only because we haven't converted to a DTO in this particular method. But if I execute, I will see the exact same thing. There we go. And now you may not notice any actual difference here between the two things, but I can assure you there is a difference in how fast uh, large amounts of data are transmitted back and forth. So that right there is kind of the beginning of what we've got. And the thing is like, what kind of sucks about this is we've got this rooms repository where I've got this hard coded string going on here. What if I wanted to make it so that I could reuse a method for store procedures in my controller without having to make a whole new repository method because that's kind of the point of the repository the repository is like here i'm going to get all the rooms here i'm going to update one here i'm going to get one whatever i want to be able to just have a couple methods in the repository most of my differentiating method methods should be in my controller right so how do i do that well that's what's going to we're going to look at in the next video where we make a more dynamic version of this method here so that you can pass in any stored procedure name and get back exactly what you're looking for. So uh, stick around for that. Come back when you get a chance. And I'll see you in the next video.